very much a part of our celebration of this Mass this morning. We come with that Christmas joy in our hearts to celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And we pray that the child of Bethlehem would be born in you in our own hearts at this time. So now to prepare ourselves to receive Jesus as risen Lord into our lives, we acknowledge our need of God's mercy and forgiveness. So as humble and contrite hearts, we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask that St. Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So now we give glory and praise to God for this special morning. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, the people of God. We praise you and we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. O God, who 
wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it. Grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Now we listen to the word of God.
second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. At various times in the past and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in our own time, the last days, he has spoken to us through his Son, the Son that he has appointed to inherit everything and through whom he made everything there is. He is the radiant light of God's glory and the perfect copy of his nature, sustaining the universe by his powerful command. And now that he has destroyed the defilement of sin, he has gone to take his place in heaven at the right hand of divine majesty. So he is now as far above the angels as the title which he has inherited is higher than their own name. God has never said to any angel, you are my son, today I have become your father, or I will be a father to him and he is son to me. Again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of men, a light that shines in the dark a light that darkness could not overpower. The Word was the true light that enlightens all people. And he was coming into the world, he was in the world that had his being through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To all who believe in the name of him who was born not out of human stock or urge of the flesh or will of man, but of God himself. The word was made flesh. He lived among us. And we saw his glory. The glory that is his as the only son of the father, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. A light that shines in the dark. A light that darkness could not overpower. The words of our gospel this morning. We celebrate the birthday of Jesus at a time when, for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, the darkest day has passed. It's a time of year when there's kind of new hope in our hearts and you know, we're looking forward to that stretch in the evenings, longer days, more daylight. So after a challenging year and facing a Christmas with a difference, with lockdowns and restrictions on visiting family and friends due to the coronavirus, I suppose we could say that never was there a time when we needed more the light and the hope of Christ's presence among us. Today we are celebrating the wonder and the joy of the Incarnation. God becoming one of us. The Word, as St. John tells us, the Word was made flesh and lived among us. Emmanuel, God is with us. In a very real way, heaven and earth are united today. I'm sure the joy of this day would have been seen, especially on the faces of the children, as they opened their presents this morning. 
And I imagine too the parents and grandparents and family members, you all shared in that children's joy, which is really God's own joy. In the reading there from the book of Hebrews, we're told that God spoke to us in the past to our ancestors in various and different ways to the prophets. But now we're told that in our time, in our own time, God has spoken to us through his son, Jesus. Pope Francis invites us to recover the wonder children feel when they approach the crib. We all know that sense of joy and wonder and excitement in the heart of a child as they look into the crib. When we pray at the crib, I think we're reminded too of the circumstances of Christ's birth. So we have a lovely crib here and no doubt uh, over the next few weeks, time and again, we'll come to pray at the crib. But it reminds us very much of the circumstances of Christ's birth. Uh, we're reminded that he was born to a poor mother, very poor accommodation, and the first people to greet him were the poor shepherds. So I think all of this reminds us and puts us in touch with the needs of the poor and the homeless people and our refugees in our own time. I suppose just reminding us too that we do our best to reach out to them and be generous in whatever way we can, thinking of the various charitable organizations which do so much good work in reaching out to our poor today. Christmas I suppose it brings out the best in us. It stirs up in our hearts a deep sense of kindness and generosity. And I suppose that generosity, is, of course, is there all the time. That divine spark is there in each one of us. But somehow at Christmas time, it seems to be rekindled in our hearts. And, you know, we would hope that we would maintain that same sense of kindness and generosity during this coming year as well. Now Christmas, it was always a family feast. But this year, again, because of coronavirus, sadly, we will not be able to celebrate Christmas in the traditional way. Many of our people who would normally be coming home from Christmas and joining with us in our Christmas masses and celebrations they are unable to do so this Christmas due to the restrictions. And we would say to them today that we miss, miss your prayerful and joyful presence. And you're with us in spirit. And I suppose the wonderful thing about the Mass, when we gather as we do for the Mass, for the Eucharist, that we unite ourselves really with all our people, wherever they may be, with all our living and dead. Now, we are always conscious that for some people in our communities, Christmas can be a sad and a lonely time, especially for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones and those who are ill at home or in hospital. So again, we want to say to you that you're in our prayer, in our thoughts at this time. So whatever our circumstances or troubles or worries today, May each one of us receive the grace to allow the joy and hope of Jesus' presence to enter our hearts and our homes this Christmas. So we stand now and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. The prayer of intercession. God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save it. So we pray. Pray for all rulers of our world, that Christ, the Prince of Peace, may guide their feet into the way of peace. Lord, hear us. For the sick and the lonely, that Christ, who shared our humanity, may inflame their hearts with his love. Lord, hear us. And for our families, that Christmas may find them united in peace and love. Lord, hear us. And for those who are away from home this Christmas, that they may know that they are not forgotten. Lord, hear us. We pray for our dead and those who have died and gone before us, marked the sign of faith, people who handed on that faith to us. And I suppose we remember in a special way too all those people who died uh, due to the coronavirus. We pray that Christ may lead them into the joyful vision of his presence. Lord, hear us. And we remember in our prayer to all our frontline workers at this time and those who keep our essential services going. And in our own community here, we remember those who manage our local shops and their staff all our home health workers and many others who have shown great kindness and generosity during the year. We pray that God will continue to bless and protect them in their work. Lord, hear us. And now for a moment, in the quiet of our own hearts, we pray for any special intentions. Lord, hear us. God of love and mercy, may the coming of your Son among us confirm our faith in your love for us and deepen our love for you and for one another. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
life and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in the love of things invisible, and so the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the two fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. But this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In the mystery of faith. Father, 
In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now I'd ask you when you're coming forward to receive Holy Communion, just come up the center aisle and down the side aisles, please.
Now, just a little note here with regard to the level five restrictions. With effect from the 26th of December, tomorrow, day, no public masses are to be celebrated. Uh, public worship goes again online. Churches may remain open for private prayer. Funerals, well, up to 10 mourners may attend. And from Sunday the 3rd of January 2021, uh, the number of guests that can attend in the church for a wedding is six. Now I'd ask you to pray for the happy repose of the soul of Kathleen Gormley of Inahan. General Mass was celebrated here on Wednesday night. May our soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. So as I was saying, there will be no public Masses uh, during this coming week, or we don't know so uncertainty as to when we will be coming back for public Mass. But uh, in the meantime, there are Mass intentions there that are, I would be offering and as privately, and I will be remembering all those people that are uh, in the newsletter at any time if you want to book a Mass for any particular intention, say I will celebrate the Mass privately. Now just a word of thanks, uh, especially to Joan and the family there for the beautiful sacred music and song we've had with us there during the week. And uh, you always bring that note of joy and enhance our celebrations in a very special way. So thank you very much. I'd like to thank all who prepared the church, as you can see, so beautifully here for this Christmas season. A lot of work went into that. And uh, I'd like to thank for Jackie, our sacristan. And thanks to all our readers and Eucharistic ministers. And a special way to thank our stewards who have been out with us all the time at every Mass. So I wish you and your families and your friends at home and abroad a very happy Christmas. Let us pray. Grant, O oh merciful God, that just as the Saviour of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. And the Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.